Yo, this episode is brought to you by Surfshark. The internet is getting more dangerous by the second. Hackers have more ways to target you. And sometimes the videos you want to watch get blocked. Okay, luckily there's a solution. You can get a VPN. It will hide your real location, making you more difficult to identify and target. But privacy and security are not all that Surfshark has to offer. Okay, if you use a VPN, you will forget about geo restrictions. You'll be able to access everything from news sources to social media apps that are unavailable to you. Okay, and you can try out Surfshark completely risk-free because they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals dudes. Use the promo code DUDES for 83% off and three extra months free. That's surfshark.deals slash dudes. Yo, a meal just ain't it without the right sauce, okay? That's why I F with Truff, okay? Truff's line of luxury pantry staples is designed to elevate every dining experience. They got everything from pasta sauces to truffle-infused mayonnaise to truffle oil to hot sauce. Now, I love this spicy truffle mayo they sent. Oh, my goodness, fire. We put it on everything. And just for y'all, get 15% off site-wide plus free shipping with promo code DUDES at truff.com, okay? That's 15% off everything at T R U F F F is in fire dot com promo code dudes. Hello, guys, welcome back to the dudes behind the food podcast. I'm David So. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Timothy De La <laughs> No, I retired. Oh, my name is Timothy Chantarangsu. <laughs> I am from FPS Russia. Hello. How are those? Uh, how are those uh, allergies treating you, dog? Let me tell you something about these fucking allergies, <laughs> man. Listen, I had no idea everybody was going through the same thing I was going through. So mm. I did this little post. I said my fucking eyes look like two little Japanese pussies. <laughs> 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 well, you had pixelated eyes. <laughs> You had bushy, pixelated eyes? Well, let me tell you something. There's, there's an insult that has stuck with me for the rest of my life okay. because of how well it was executed in a high school. So if you guys, if, if anybody notices, I don't really have facial hair, so I right. can't grow sideburns really. It just kind of grows down. Mm. And so <laughs> somebody noticed it. It was a friend of mine in high school. And we, you know, we just sit around roasting each other. And I said some joke to him. And he looked at me and he just goes, he goes, you can't grow sideburns? He goes, your fucking sideburns look like Japanese pussy hair. Yeah. And yeah. everybody died laughing. <laughs> and I just sat there. I was like, well, yeah? Well, you? Yeah? Yeah, well, yeah I fucked your mom. <laughs> it was so, it was such a well-timed diss. Yeah. I, I, that was like one of the first times I ever blinked out. <laughs> I had nothing. And they just kept laughing and they kept laughing. And then I went home and I was like, it does look like Japanese pussy hair. <laughs> you mean it looks amazing? Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> he was like, why is it always pixelated everywhere you go? <laughs> Wait, real quick before you continue with your allergies. That little subtle roast that made the whole class laugh reminded me of this one time. <laughs> there was I was in drama class and there was this one white girl, you know, like, you know, my school, my high school was predominantly Mexican and black. So there was just a handful of white people. Right. Um, and, but everyone knew who they were. Uh, it's like a guy named White Mike. His name happened to be Mike. And there's this one. Yo, everybody has a white mic. Everybody, has a, everybody white has, mic. has a white mic. Isn't that crazy? And then there was this one girl. I forget her name exactly. But, you know, she was like a hood white girl. And she was like Christmas was coming up. And she was talking to everybody. And she was like, oh, my God, I can't wait for Christmas. She was like, yo, like, Rodney, oh, man, like, just wait, I'm going to get you this. And then she was like, oh, yo, Julian, I'm going to get you this and that. And then, like, I forget his name. Let's call him Rodney. But, like, it's kind of it's kind of quiet. And Rodney goes, wait, what money? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody started cracking up to the point where she was so embarrassed, she started crying. <laughs> They were like, wait, wait, what money? What are you talking it's, too, it's too real. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even a joke. He was genuinely confused. Dude, let me tell you this. I actually remember the first time I realized the power of roasting. And it's, it's actually the onslaught of me practicing roast. Mm. So it was in junior high, and I told this on my podcast, but you're going to hear it again. Mm -hmm. It was in junior high, and there was this guy. His name is Sean. Mm hmm. By the way, this motherfucker, another story too. He, it was like world history class, right? So we're learning about different places on the earth or whatever, right? And there was like this slide that came up where it was Asian people, right? Mm. And he made some type of like Asian joke at me mm. and the whole class laughed, mm. right? And I just sat there. I was like, fuck. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> God. And he was so proud of it. And I just sat there. I was like, dude, I'm going to – I got to get him back. Yeah. Right? And I never really openly roasted people like this. And okay. I legit – because this is like one of those moments where I'm like, there is power in learning how to fucking clap back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because – you know, being a fat kid, I was always the butt of the joke. Mm. And then the way I would solve my problems is just punching them in the face. <laughs> but punching them in the face versus roasting them back, it, it does not equate. Mm -hmm. Because you can get violent and you're just known as a guy that's sensitive and just start swinging at people. Right. Or you could just be smarter with them with words mm -hmm. and shut them the fuck up. Mm -hmm. So the next time in class, it was it was, uh, it was was this thing of Africa, right? This mm -hmm. dude was black. And he's like a bigger dude. We're both heavy set guys. Yeah. And a picture comes up where it was like an African tribe. And I was like, look, it's Sean's, Sean Baker's family picnic. Oh, the best. <laughs> and then everybody busts up laughing. And I was like, oh, this is why people do this. Yeah, the power. The power. After that, dude, he never said shit. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, that's what you get for making that stupid Asian joke. And I got you back with the African joke, you fucker. I thought you, I thought you were going to say you guys were going to be best friends after that. No, we were not. So he got <laughs> super fucking mad. But he, he got he got the last laugh okay. because he was a dude that he the day before he left, he was going to move schools. He was asking people for money. He said, let me borrow a dollar so I can get a drink. Okay. This fool asked me for a dollar, got a fucking fruit punch fruitopia, and he never came back to school. And wow. he owes me a dollar <laughs> to this fucking day. Sean Baker, give me my fucking dollar. <laughs> uh, speaking of Fruitopia, <laughs> every day during PE, I used to buy a lemonade Fruitopia, all right? And, uh, or maybe it wasn't Fruitopia, but it was lemonade, right? And there was this bigger kid. His name was Ricardo, I think. Oh, God. And, and there was like a time where every time I would buy a lemonade, he would fucking snatch it from me take a big ass drink of it and i was like i was getting pissed he would even if i was holding on to it he would like like strong arm it and just take it from me and drink it right and so one day i was like what can i fucking do to make this dude stop taking my lemonade and then super simple he took it one day i was like yeah that's why i peed in it and he like stopped and like spit but i actually but even before that i was like spitting in it every day while he took what it. what the fuck yeah bro i was like I, and one day i was just like yeah that's why i peed in it and obviously, I didn't pee in it, but like I was spitting in it. You know what I'm saying? Why would he just come up and just take your lemonade? I don't know. I was a little dude. I mean, I definitely I didn't get bullied, but it was always an annoying motherfucker like that. That was like, I'm gonna just take his lemonade. You know what I'm saying? Doc, I just remember just junior high, just being this weird space of like, am I gonna get into an argument with somebody? Am I gonna have to fight somebody today? Because mm. everybody would just always fuck with each other all the time. <laughs> and like I remember too, this was the weirdest thing. So there's this kid named Armando. Mm -hmm. Another guy, he actually ended up being my friend later on. And, you know, you don't know what people personally go through, you know, in their personal lives. Yeah. You know, there's probably a reason why these kids are assholes. But I'm also a kid. I'm not going to give a fuck. Right. So I was standing in line. And, you know, me being a fat kid, this kid was just, you know, throwing fat jokes at me. And I just got really sick of it. And I literally told him, I was like, if you call me fucking fat one more time, I'm just going to slap the shit out of you. Yeah, yeah. And I slapped this kid super fucking mm -hmm. hard. But this other kid, Armando, didn't know the context, right? Mm. He just saw this guy slap somebody. So he, he was like, today's the day I stand up to bullies. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I was the one getting bullied. So this one comes up. He goes, you think you're some tough shit? Huh? You think you're bullying people? I'm oh like, oh, my God. I was like, you should. Are you talking to him or me? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. So we were both standing there confused because we were both like, who's he yelling at? I'm yeah. like, him? Me, right? He goes, no, you go up, slap people? What's up? What's up? And he dropped his backpack and he started squaring up on me. I'm like, he's the bully. Hilarious. I'm standing up to the bully right now. Wow. And this fool just started swinging on At me. At you? And then we got into a fucking fight. Wow. And so it was like the worst day of my life. I'm like, <laughs> this guy was bullying me. I stood up to the fucking bully. I slapped the dude. This guy comes up and starts swinging at me. It was the worst day ever. And then you and Armando became besties. No, I beat the <laughs> shit out of him, dude. Because I was a big kid. Yeah, yeah, Right? Yeah. He just wanted to, he just, the, the, the weird thing is and like. And you're still a big kid. I am. <laughs> the weird thing is like in junior high, I specifically remember. There would always be somebody who was like smaller, but he's kind of like thuggish. Uh -huh. and they would pick like the dweebiest big kid because mm. they would think that we wouldn't fight back. Mm -hmm. Little do you know, I'm a Korean. Korean boy. <laughs> yeah. So this guy was probably, I don't know, like 5'7", mm -hmm. right? And at the time in junior high, I was like 5'10". Mm -hmm. But size really matters when you're at that age. And none of us really knew how to fight. Right. So I just ended up beating the shit out of this kid. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was suspended. Damn, look at you. I never really got, I didn't get into any fights. You know what I'm saying? Like- you never got bullied. I got bullied a lot. I did not get bullied. Um, I was just always just 
super popular and super liked. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Everybody likes you, Tim. I was fucking fat as hell, thick ass glasses, and the little fucking penis split haircut. <laughs> oh my! You had that in high school? Hell yeah, did. Oh my! No, no, junior high. Oh, junior high. No, in junior high, I probably got into one little fight in junior high. Like, like I did a fucking like this kid Paul Choi was annoying me in like sixth grade. Oh, Korean guy. Yeah, so I fucking did a little like karate kid like hey, like jump kick, kicked him in the stomach, and he started crying. We were about to fight, and then the teacher stopped us. She was like, I can either. I can either like give you guys a pink slip, which was like the main like punishment. She's like, or you guys can apologize to each other and carry on. We're like, sorry, and that was it. You know, <laughs> I hated it. You're just fighting so much. And um, there, there was one kid I because I take te- te- taekwondo when I was a kid. Okay, and we the taekwondo studio that I was at was run by a guy who was straight from Korea. Okay, and he did a, a style of taekwondo which is very military style called uh, tangsudo, and tangsudo is like tangsudo. Yeah, it's very okay. legit. And so when we would go to these competitions, we would fucking wipe everybody out. Okay. Because it wasn't Americanized Taekwondo. Mm-hmm. It was like we w- once you hit yellow belt, you're, you're sparring now. Like I see. legit full contact sparring. And so it was just obviously his studio didn't last because it was too serious because mm. they wanted it just for fun. Mm. But he didn't believe in that shit. He goes, <laughs> no, you're going to fucking like fight each other. So I remember <laughs> in elementary school. Fucking six-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These kids are just going crazy. <laughs> and I remember I was so hyped. Because I would go to school and I'm like, I wish somebody would just fuck with me today. Mm. And one time, it was not their day. I was just feeling myself. But mm. this guy always fat jokes, and I ended up back striking back a back straight kick. It's like a donkey kick mm. right to this kid's gut, and he fucking flew. Mm. And I got suspended again. God damn it, David. So, but I would always get bullied, and it would always suck because I'm trying to tell these guys, it's like, listen. <laughs> They're hitting me. Right, right, I just right. always get the better end of it. Right. You know what I mean? Because they're trying to pick on the weakest guy. And because you're like bigger, they probably didn't believe you. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, look at me. I get these thick glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I um, I mean, I feel like if I ever got into fights, it's like elementary school. I think me and this kid, uh, Daniel, were slap boxing one day. And I think he was just hitting me a little too much. Like just getting too many hits. And I just got frustrated. And I remember just swinging and him being like, oh. Oh, you got serious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea I was getting pissed. But I never got into like a fight. Fight. Nah. Dude, let me tell you this story. So th- since we're talking about clowning on people. Yeah, yeah. And I, I only unsurfaced this traumatic ass fucking memory when I went back home because mm-hmm. of a homie reminded me of this. So years ago, uh, if you guys don't listen to my podcast, I'm just going to go over the story and a little background. So I didn't grow up in a very nice neighborhood. Right, but I was always a, just a goofy kid, mm. and I just would happen to be around people who did bad things, and they allowed me to kick it around because we grew up together. Yeah. So I was never in a gang. I never did any of that stuff. I just liked being around people who could protect me. Mm. Right. It was just a scary time. Yeah, yeah. And if you guys don't know, like back in the day, like gang violence was fucking popular. It was the shit. Nowadays, mm. it's not so cool. I feel like it's 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 cool, but it's different. It's different. You yeah. know what I mean? Like for us, it's like even if you imitated it, it was something cool to do. Like, right. like the way if you, for example, if you listen to like the disses between like Tupac and Biggie, mm-hmm. that these were diss tracks. Yeah, like it was fucking crazy. So I remember when I was a kid, I was super good at just you know I had that moment where roasting people was a thing, mm. and I would kick it with this group, this set, and it was only because I was friends with this guy's. Uh, younger brother and we were allowed to kick it with the older homies okay. and so I'm a little too comfortable I don't know and this is where I learned that there's there's a hierarchy to things you mm. can't just start mouthing off to whoever, whoever yeah unless you like sometimes you just don't know someone like that exactly mm-hmm. so I, I sat there and basically I was making jokes and I was laughing and then his older brother I think he kind of when I look back at it now he enjoyed the fact that I was getting laughed so he tried to make jokes too but he's not a funny guy mm. and so I said something along the lines of just like, oh, that shit didn't go over well. And then people started cracking up. Mm-hmm. Everybody's laughing but him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, so you you fucking funny, right? <laughs> right? And I'm, I'm still laughing it up, whatever, whatnot. And he goes, okay, cool. What if I just fucking like shot your dick off right now? <laughs> oh, my God. And he fucking took his fucking piece and he put it right next to my thigh. What? Yeah, and I was, how old was I? Fuck, I can't remember. But I was like in high school. I was super young. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was like frozen. Everybody's laughing. I'm not laughing, mm. right? And I was dead scared yeah i go home <laughs> and i start crying oh no oh i go home and i start crying because i thought i was going to die right and so my friend calls me he goes hey man are you cool man sorry about my older brother blah blah and i was like he was gonna kill me uh- <laughs> <laughs> and i'm crying on the phone to my friend the crazy thing is now 
both those guys, they're pharmacists. Oh, wow. Well. They turn themselves around. Good for them. Very, very sweet. Or maybe he still keeps his peace on them just in case. Someone I don't think crazy. so. He's like super fucking nice. Like you'll see a lot of these like early like 90s like Vietnamese gangbangers. They'll meet like a girl and the girl will change their life. Mm. And so they drop all their shit. He's like the sweetest dude ever. Aww. And I remember I was like, hey, you remember your brother almost fucking shot my <laughs> dick off? He goes, he's not like that anymore. <laughs> he's a pharmacist just like us. Like He's super cool. Times have changed. You know, you're young and dumb sometimes. He made me cry. <laughs> I was gonna die. Um, I remember being scared one time because it was me and my my homies from Gardena, my boy Will, my boy Johnny. Uh, we were just kind of walking around in Paramount, and I forget what the occasion was, but motherfuckers was out. It might have been like Fourth of July or something like that. Just people were out and about, you know. And we were just some fucking young kids. We we, we couldn't have been older than like. Psh, 13 walking around the area in paramount and we ran into another group of older kids um if we were like 13 they had to be like mm, i don't know 17 18 right that's a substantial difference at that age yes so um somehow someone says something like a hey, like oh we both found out that we all like rap you know what i'm saying like johnny used to freestyle i used you know i used to freestyle of course and then um this dude in in their clique i guess like they just knew he was like the main battle rapper dude because they were like oh y'all trying to battle blah 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 so Johnny starts saying some shit it's trash oh. so and this guy in their group starts going off but then he starts roasting everybody in our in our clique right he's like blah 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 he's like that's why your homie got a fake watch and blah 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 but it's all bars and like his homies are cracking up and I'm like oh my god Johnny's dying right now so I get in there and I'm like blah 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 you kill my boy but it's time for the next scene that's why your chain is turning your neck green and all his homies laugh right and I'm feeling myself now <clears throat> so I'm like and I get stuck in my rap and I'm like and you ugly and then they laugh and I'm like and your mama's ugly right Right? And then they stop. <laughs> oh, see, you had one of those moments like I did. <laughs> so they stop. And then the kid that's rapping was like, what? And then another guy that was with him, his older brother, he was like, if you talk about his mama, you talk about my mama. That's my brother. He's like, what you trying to do? And then I'm like, he's like, what did you say? What did you just say? I'm like, nah, I didn't say mama, man. I said, uh, I said, I'm a, uh, I said, I'm a, I said drama. I said, I'm a, I said, I said, I'm like, <laughs> you're like thinking, what rhymes with mama? Yeah, what said, rhymes with mama? I said drama, man. I said drama. I said, you don't want to get into no drama, <laughs> right? He was like, yeah, that's what I thought. And then so we're just kind of there now. We're like, fuck, we're about to get our asses beat. And then another one of their, the guys in their group is like, all right, man, whatever. Y'all trying to go to this party? He's like, I'll bring up. He's like, should we bring the heaters? I'm like, oh, they have guns. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, they're not just rappers. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, oh, they are strapped. This is what they do on the side. <laughs> but we were definitely like, oh, shit. That could have went all bad. Like, yeah. We're art students? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, we weren't no bitches, dog. I don't give a fuck. They have guns, dude. <laughs> that's, that's when the play stops. Yeah, yeah, but it was definitely a, l- a little scary. <laughs> well, we'll tell you more about these stupid moments <laughs> when we come back from the break. Better help, better help, it's all about that mental health. Hey, what's up, y'all? You know what? Not enough people talk about mental health, and I'm glad the conversations are starting more and more these days, okay? Shout out to our sponsor, BetterHelp, because let me tell you, Sometimes we just need a little help, okay? Is there something preventing you from achieving your goals? Oh, all the time. What interferes with your happiness? So many things. Y'all should really check out betterhelp.com slash foods because you know what? Even me, I'm a happy ass dude, but sometimes I get a little overwhelmed. I get a little stressed out. I feel a little sad for no reason, and that happens to everybody. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can connect in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's super lit, okay? Um, And guess what? You can message your counselor at any time. The service is available for clients worldwide, and they got professional counselors who specialize in everything from depression, stress, anxiety, to grief, even self-esteem, okay? Now, just for y'all, I got a special treat. You'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash foods. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash foods for 10% off your first month. When that moment happened, what were you like mentally going through? Because when I had that gun pulled at my thigh, I I was just trying. I remember everything just went super slow. <laughs> right? Everything just went. 
it was like that matrix. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh shit! Today I fucked up. Reddit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. it was one of those things because I realized too that I think those moments too, even though it was very bad, it was also very good for me because I learned that there's a hierarchy to things. Yeah. And then when I got checked, I was a lot smarter about how I roasted people and where I did things because before I thought, oh, you could say whatever. Right. But it doesn't work that way. I think a lot of people don't realize that. Like, look, you might be cool with somebody, but you don't know someone like that. You know what I'm yes. saying? And it's kind of uh, every situation is specific. Um, I think from then on, I never talked about someone's mom again unless I knew it was cool, unless I knew that was the relationship, you know? When I was in elementary school, <clears throat> the weird thing is, like, there was uh, these two brothers that were in the school. There were these two Mexican dudes. Um, and... We were. I remember we were sitting in line, and I was what in fifth grade or fourth grade at the time because I just transferred over to this new elementary school. Yeah. But of course, everybody's like trying to roast somebody, <laughs> and then I did a your mama joke at mm. this fool, and this fool once again got roasted, and I was like, cool, I won that exchange or whatever. <clears throat> they end up jumping me ah. uh, on the way back home because I I would I will only I only lived uh, a couple blocks from my elementary school at the time before we moved, mm -hmm. and they ended up jumping me. After school, they actually fucking chucked a rock at my head, and then like the top of my head was bleeding. Oh god, is and that so, why you have that bald spot? Oh you know, god, Tim, no, this, I was born with this idiot. <laughs> and so I, I remember I was bleeding, and then my neighbor Jason, his dad was at home. Jason he, Chen? No, 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 no. Okay, sorry, go on, go on. <laughs> Not that little boy. <laughs> I love his TikToks, by the way. And so <laughs> he comes up, and Jason's dad sees me getting jumped. Yeah, comes up grabs the fucking kids by the shirt, lifted both of them with his hands like this. Oh, shit. And he told them, get the fuck out of here. And he fucking chucked the kids away and they ran away. But I had this huge welt and I remember him like putting like this ice pack on my head. Oh. Tell, and, but yeah, he's super Korean. He was telling me to stop crying. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> he's like a tough, he's like an old tougher Korean dude. He's yeah, like, yeah. Hey, stop crying. Like only girls cry. Damn. And it's like, if you, if you want to go cry about it, that means you have enough time to go fucking go beat their ass. Oh, wow. And so the next day, mm -hmm. <laughs> dude, I understand why I was a troubled kid because these, this is the type of advice I would get from adults, mm. you know, because at the because when I first came to this country too, I was what, two, three years old. Okay. My first language wasn't English. Right. I didn't speak English very well, so I got bullied a lot. Mm. And so the only thing my dad would tell me as a kid is like, yo, if somebody messes with you, you have to make sure they don't mess with you again mm -hmm. because I just, I didn't know anybody here. Yeah. And so <clears throat> my head was bleeding the next day, told my dad about it. He goes, okay, so what are you going to do about it? I was like, I don't know. Yeah. He goes, we'll make sure they don't bully you again. Mm. So I go back to school. I find this is like during lunchtime. Find one of the kids. I just start wailing on the kid at lunch. Boom! And then his brother bitches out and runs away. Oh shit! And so I go into the bathroom. And so this is in the elementary school. There was like the the mess hall or wherever where we eat food. Mm. You know the shitty little elementary school food. I'm pounding on this kid. You know kid style, whatever. Yeah. It's not as gangster as you think. Just arms flailing. Yeah, we're little kids. You know, I'm swinging at him. Blah 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 blah. He runs into the bathroom. I chase him into the bathroom. I tackle this kid, and I literally just start stomping on his face. Oh wow! Over and over the, again. The anger. And then this is how funny kids. But he obviously wasn't that hurt because we're kids, right? <laughs> this is how funny kids are. We go. We but we all get caught. We're in the principal's office before we step in, and they both look at each other. They look at me and they go, "Should we tell them that we were just playing?" What really? <laughs> Like, bro, I was stomping on your face in the bathroom. This is not going to work. And these fools go in. They devise their own plan. It was like, oh, yeah, me and Dave, we were just playing tag. Oh. And the principal was like, this is dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, you guys were clearly fighting. Because he saw that I had a huge, like, band-aid on my head. Right, right, right. But when they fucking chucked the rock at my head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, so you just reminded me. <laughs> uh, Rick always fucking laughs at me because... <laughs> when I first went to Paramount, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would walk home from, from school, right? And there was a bus that always used to go by the old apartment in Paramount, a bus full of kids. They might have been coming from Paramount. I forget exactly where they were coming from. but um, So I'd be walking home, and there was always like a group of kids on the bus. I never saw them. <laughs> <laughs> that like would like either flip me off or yell something at me and they probably did that to just random kids it probably wasn't even personal at me right and so one day dog I was walking home and they fucking threw like a can of juice and it like landed in front of me right and then so like and Rick fucking died when I told him the story but like to like show them that like uh, not to fuck with me or like that I wasn't a bitch I picked up the can and I 
dumped it out so they could see it. And I fucking threw it. <laughs> this is my moment. I was like, oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, and they were like, this one's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave him alone. <laughs> He's fucking a little weird there. <laughs> Dude, those bus stop fights were always the craziest thing, dude. Bus stop fights? Oh, yes. Con- go with yours and I will tell I you. I mean, more. I have so many. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to tell this story. This is one of my favorite stories ever. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> so years ago, I told this on JK News. And when I tell some of these stories to some of these kids, they don't believe it. But this is just how it was when you grew up in a very, like, poor area. Mm-hmm. Everybody did stupid shit all the time. Yeah. And so there was a kid named Darius. Mm-hmm. Darius was one of those kids that very energetic. Never paid attention to school. Just always a troublemaker, right? Okay. Nobody knows about his personal life. Once again, I don't know this. Mm-hmm. So there's a bus stop that was next to the elementary school that I used to go to, but that was when we were in junior high. Okay. And that's when everybody would meet up. There was this African kid. Mm-hmm. Kid didn't really speak a lot of English. Mm. And Darius would always roast this kid all the time. Roast the African kid. All the time. Okay. Make fun of his egg. Hey, what are you doing today? You mm-hmm. know, just do all that shit to him, right? And he would never say anything. Okay. One time... And this is the last time I ever saw this kid. Mm. He's sitting there, and this is like during wintertime, he has a puff jacket on. He's layered up, by the way. Mm-hmm. Abnormally layered up. Like, puff jacket, fucking Old Navy performance fleece, the shirt, <laughs> you know, <laughs> beady, everything, right? <laughs> Darius, right when he sees him, he's walking up. Darius starts roasting him again. Yeah. And, you know, I actually felt bad for him because I used to get bullied a lot, too. Yeah. But I never stood up for him because I'm too busy try- not trying to get bullied. Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> this dude goes, just quiet as fuck, never says a word. Starts unzipping his jacket. Mm. And we're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Takes off his jacket, the hoodie, the performance fleece. I was like, this fool's layered the fuck up. He's like an onion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Takes off a baggy shirt. He has another shirt on. Takes off another shirt. Then there's a tank top on. We're like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Takes off his belt. Takes off the belt. Then he starts taking off his pants. Okay. I was like, yo, is this fool about to get butt naked? Yeah. Dog. Pulls out a fucking table leg from his pants. What? A fucking table leg from his pants. And he says this one line. He goes, not today, Monty Foka. Oh. And, and just slow-mo. You see Darius trying to run for it. And you see Darius, his back starts arching because he knows oh, it's God. coming. And he cracks him with the table leg and starts beating the shit out of him with the table leg. Wow. That line stuck with me forever. Not today, Monty Foka. Not today. <laughs> it starts Beating the shit out of him with the table leg. Wow. The craziest thing I've ever seen. And he just, like a serial killer, picks up his clothes, goes into the bus, and just sits down and doesn't say a fucking word. Wow. Never saw him again. Wow. Crazy. And then he vanished into thin air. And then he was like, today was the last day, Monty Foca. <laughs> Have you ever seen Moonlight? Yes. It's like that scene where the kids are getting bullied every day and then one day yes. he just grabs the fucking chair. Yes. Yeah, the That's desk. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> Dude, if you look up videos too, and the only reason why people believe that story after, there was a, a, a trend on Twitter where African people were showing like these African fights with these kids whipping each other with belts and table legs. Mm. I was like, that's what that kid did. Oh, shit. He literally whipped out a table leg and started beating the shit out of this fool. Damn. It's so funny that you say... Um, bus stop fights because literally at first when you said that I was like mm, really but then I remember the bus stop that I always used to wait at uh, at Paramount right behind it there was a little like street that um, like a dead end street that didn't connect to the main street and it was second street and everybody would go there to fight like specifically I remember like just told our girls being like okay after school second street <laughs> second street and like you would walk by that street dog after a fight there would be fucking extensions ripped out just all laid Ugh. out cross you know what I'm saying like that's where people will go to fight um, and uh, you know it's a good time <laughs> Dude, every, so everybody had a spot we had um, a park that was near us where everybody fought at everybody scrapped at there was a part in two in high school I'm not sure if it's like this now but growing up uh, boxing everybody wanted to box each other really everybody would meet up and box there was a dude a homie that uh, we used to kick with named Preston Preston, dope boxer. I think he's boxing now still. But <laughs> I remember just like people would meet up at this park and everybody would just start scrapping with each other. Some, somebody would bring some shitty little gloves and Damn. Like, let's fucking box up. One time in high school, there was a kid, Asian kid, and he had like a little man complex. Mm. And once again, one of the things that I think I really fucked up on was that I was a little too nice. Okay. And so because I was too nice, a lot of people would just try to take advantage of it, right? Mm-hmm. Because I was still a Christian kid, and I would o- I was always taught to put your best foot forward. Mm. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, oh, just smile and people will leave you alone. It's not the fucking case. <laughs> 
when you grow up in a very weird area, people take that as a sign of weakness, mm-hmm. which is why I understand. Like when you were in high school, when you moved switch schools, you kind of had that frown on your face because yeah. you didn't want to get punk. Yeah, yeah. My ass over here, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so. I think he wanted to kind of like build a name for himself. So they okay. always picked the goofy big guy once again. Okay. Bad thing for him is that I grew up, I wasn't a great fighter. None of us were really great fighters, but yeah. I got hit a lot. Yeah. So it's like, it's not like I never threw a fist. I had to out of survival. Yeah. <laughs> this fool, we meet up at um, my friend's garage. <laughs> he, he's like your size. Yeah. And I'm this big at yeah. this point. I'm like, why do you want to box me? This right. is a bad idea. And we're supposed to box light, you know, just kind of touch like each other. Like ship, ship, ship. He shit. swings at me full fucking clip, dude. Oh, my. And I literally close my eyes and I just swing one. Boom. I knocked this dude. I actually knocked him out. Wow. I felt so bad. Yeah. I felt terrible, dude. <laughs> but he was like, why would you hit me? We should fight. No, I yeah. don't like fighting. We Yeah, we should fight for... for... <laughs> what are we fighting for? For Veda's love. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You say you don't like fighting. I, I also... People always ask me to like roast them and shit because of Wild and Out. But I hate <sighs> roasting. Like, I don't, I don't enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I would do it like... I mean, it started while we're on the topic... You know, I was good at battling people in high school because people found out that I rap. So it's like they were always like, oh, yo, yo, my, my boy heard you rap. He wants to battle you. You know what I'm saying? So it was always like very it was like wild and out. Very like easy jokes. You know what I'm saying? They would hit me with the Asian jokes. I hit them with the uh, Mexican jokes or or like um, or the black jokes. And we would just roast each other. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, and, you know, I, and I specifically I remember when I first went to Paramount, since there weren't a lot of Asian kids there. This one dude being shocked that I clap back with any type of joke. Oh, for real? Like I remember just getting off the bus or getting dropped off, and this dude, as soon as he saw me, or maybe I was, I was like with some, I forget, but some dude was like saw me and immediately was like, you know, ching chong, ching chong, ching chong, doing the ching chong shit, right? Yeah. And I hit him back with the like the you know the that type of yeah. shit, <laughs> and he was. His face was shocked, but then like he started cracking up, and then you know, we, and everything was cool, and we were just cool, you know. But I remember because they had never heard anybody clap back before when we would be in these little battles, and you know, and you know, the Mexican dudes would hit me with like basic ass, you know, like Asian bad driver jokes. But I remember specifically one time I was battling this dude, Mexican dude, and it was it was in a sea. Of Mexicans, you know what I'm saying? It was like me, maybe one of my homies, and then like a bunch of Mexicans watching their boy rap, and they said something about me, like bad driving, crashing the car. But I said something like, "How you gonna talk about me driving when y'all got like 15 people in one van?" And just saying the basic ass like joke like that, they all were like, "Oh," because they couldn't believe I was saying some shit back, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those those moments are always really good, dude. Yeah. I remember when I I got into a habit of going a little too far, mm-hmm. and like. Because <laughs> sometimes too, you know, when you're young, you're very emotional. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I specifically remember this joke where I went a little too far, but everybody was laughing, but I felt bad because he, he felt bad because mm. it wasn't fun anymore. It wasn't like because he was doing a little bit too much of the Ching Chong jokes, and mm. it got so fucking upset because <laughs> I, you know, when you know when you grow up in the same block, you kind of know about everybody's like background and stuff. Yeah. But he made some type of like Ching Chong joke, and I was he, oh, he he started talking. You know, when you talk about your parents, and you know when you do like mama or dad jokes i wasn't so particular about it mm. i was just like oh it's a free-for-all because if you if you up the quotient there then i'm gonna go there too <laughs> right right so he says something about my my mom and dad fucking or some weird <laughs> weird fucking joke right like asian people fucking weird or something <laughs> and i was like don't even talk about dads you don't even have one <laughs> mm, yes that that's always the one yeah and then everybody went <clears throat> like the quiet thing and he just got super quiet you could see he was getting mad oh it hit a little too close it to hit home. a little too close to home but I did not let up. I just mm. kept going in because it was just like I got drunk off the power of it, right? Yeah. Afterward, I apologized to him though. <laughs> I went out. I was like, "Hey, bro, I think I went a little too far on that." He goes, "Nah, it's cool, man. Just you know, just the dad shit just got." Like, <laughs> I was like, "You know, I don't have a pops and stuff like that." I was like, "Yeah, my bad." You talked about my mom and dad, so I thought it was cool, but then I, I went a little too far. I mean, that's the thing too. It's like if you're gonna if you're gonna come at me, then be ready for that shit. Yeah. Then how you know? How are you not gonna be able to handle it? That's the worst. Yeah. When someone like comes at you, and then when you when you give them that same energy, they can't handle it. It, it was hard too because being a fat person is such an easy joke to make, and I know too yeah. because I have had so many fat jokes said to me. I have them like ready to go. Yeah. So it's just an easy, quick thing to do. So I always had to be just a little bit better because mm-hmm. if you could say anything. 
you could be like, oh, your fucking your your belly's made out of bacon, <laughs> and, you know, and it would internally make me laugh. <laughs> so I have to make sure I don't laugh at their right. jokes because it was so funny to me. That that's really funny for yeah, some reason. You know I mean? I mean, they would make like bacon jokes and shit to me. <laughs> like, dog, some of these fat jokes were so good. When the, when the roasting happens, I have to make sure I don't laugh because if I laugh, they win. <laughs> <laughs> like I would just be like. Fuck, that's so good. Well, you know what's funny is on on while and out, I would always if they, I would always laugh mm-hmm. because I didn't want people to think on on TV be like, oh, Tim's hurt, Tim's yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, like some sometimes, oh, I would either laugh. It was a good, if it was clever. If the Asian Joe was clever, I would laugh. But if it was like super played out, then I'd like, oh, I'd like roll my eyes or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or I'd do this. I go meh yeah. a lot. But man, I feel like if you were on Wild and Out, they would have hit you with the Asian jokes and the fat jokes. Oh, when I went on Wild, if I went on Wild and Out, I would have lost all that weight. <laughs> I, would, I would never give them a fucking chance. <laughs> but I'll tell you this though, like. When I was on that the the failed show, what's it called again? Um, crack me up, crack me up. I really liked the one thing I did like about that show was because uh, it was uh, conceited and Charlie Clips. Yes, they were so good at just giving me tips, mm. and they didn't have any personal feelings about anything. Right. So it allowed us to just freestyle these jokes back and forth, and there was no personal feelings. Oh, yes. And the thing about those two, they're so fucking creative. Mm-hmm. I would just be listening to them, being like, in my head going, bars. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was kind of <clears throat> amazed, mm-hmm. especially with uh, Conceited's wordplay. Mm-hmm. When he does wordplay, I'm, I feel like it's almost too complicated where it goes over people's heads too much. It, Conceited will always say that, because um, I've been, to, you know, I, I used to go to the, a lot of the battle events sometimes here and there when they were like accessible. And uh, Khan will say that like he sometimes will lose in person if you're just watching it live because you're missing what he's saying. And someone who comes with like a more aggressive energy, you might leave that battle being like, oh, he, he got Khan, right? But on the replay, he's like, but. Watch what they say online when they watch it again, when they can listen to it, when they can replay it, when they hear what I'm actually saying, it might change their minds. It's so creative. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, yo, I don't even understand how the fuck you came up. He did one random line that people didn't like, but I thought was kind of fire. It was like a Disney line about Jafar or some shit like that. Mm. And everybody kind of booted. And I was mm. like, dog, that shit was genius. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Gonzo Witty dude. Um, I remember he said one of the <laughs> I mean, you know. This was one of the first episodes we did together, so of course, you know what I'm saying, no one had said the cat and dog shit to me yet, uh-huh. but one of the first uh, cat-dog jokes ever said to me on Wild and Out, so stupid, and even the setup made me laugh because he fucking, he called me a dork. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, Tim, you at home, you watch cartoons, you a dork. Like, <laughs> when you hear that cat and dog is on, you go grab a knife and a fork. <laughs> Stupid. So dumb. Yeah. And we'll be right back with more zingers like that after this break. Squidda squaddoo. Hey guys, this episode of Dudes Behind the Foods is brought to you by GoodyBrand.com. Tim here just popping in to remind you that what's a better Christmas gift than some fly ass clothes? I mean, GoodyBrand.com, we got new hats. Uh, count your blessings. We got beanies. We got new flannels. We got all types of new gear. So go to goodybrand.com and check it out. Yo, this episode is brought to you by Surfshark. You ever get that phrase, this video is not available in your location? Does that sound familiar? If it does, then let me tell you why a VPN is the solution to your problems, okay? A VPN doesn't only increase online privacy, which you need, trust me. Oh, trust me with all the crazy things i search up it helps you avoid hackers it also helps you access entertainment because the content you see is limited by your geographic location now that's just lit but if you use a vpn you can change your virtual location and forget about restrictions and censorship can't find what to watch on netflix hulu disney plus or other streaming platforms unlock new libraries with a vpn If you can't watch a YouTube video, connect to a different location with a VPN. If you can't access certain websites or apps through school or office networks, try a VPN, okay? So try Surfshark risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash dudes, okay? Enter promo code dudes for 83% off and three extra months free. You heard me right, three extra months for free. That's surfshark.deals slash dudes. 
Yo, every time I eat something, I need some special sauce to just take it next level, okay? That's why I F with Truff. Truff's line of luxury pantry staples is designed to elevate every dining experience, okay? Inspired by streetwear and hip-hop culture, this hot sauce brand has an edge. Truff's full lineup of products includes hot sauces, pasta sauces, mayonnaise, and their very own truffle oil. Oh, let me tell you, I've been using this truffle spicy mayonnaise and it is fire literally me and chia have been putting it on everything okay truff offers a variety of gift sets that are perfect for anyone and on any occasion okay truff was featured on oprah's favorite things the star's coveted hand-picked gift list three times it's the number one best-selling sauce on amazon and number one best-selling sauce at whole foods truff has received 10,000 customer reviews Truff's products are all infused with 100% real black winter truffle or white truffle. That means no synthetic or artificial flavoring ever. And let me tell you, you can tell because it is bomb, okay? Get 15% off site-wide plus free shipping with promo code DUDES at truff.com. That's 15% off everything at T-R-U-F-F. That's F as in fire.com. Promo code DUDES. See the um have you seen that clip of Charlie Clips on I think it was on Funk Flex just fucking freestyling for like fifteen or twenty minutes? I think I saw part of it. Bro, that shit's insane to me. I always give clips super out of all the battle rappers, you know, uh like cause you know, there's a lot of like URL battle rap dudes that came out while and out, right? Like Con, Clips, Hitman. Um, and I feel like Clips was the one that could always 100% freestyle if he needed to. Yes. Like, of course, you know, people prepare jokes here and there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Khan is a, is a battle rapper. So, you know, of, of course his shit is like, you know, he got some jokes written down, right? But Clips could really go off the top if he needed to. And um, and I remember one time me and Clips went back and forth for a little bit. And I remember feeling like, let's go! Let's go! Because I was keeping up. And I was like, let's go, man! Yeah. What else? <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> and he was so good because he's fat. Yeah, yeah. But... Don't come with the fat jokes to them because he has heaters ready. Oh. So it's like that was the opposite between him and uh, Doughboy. Like mm. Doughboy, he was also a fat guy, but he didn't have the skills like Charlie Clips did because the fat joke is always going to be the one that makes everybody laugh immediately. I know. I know. And you know what? And Doughboy, you know what I'm saying? Doughboy, sometimes Doughboy thought he had that heat and they just wouldn't hit like he thought they would. One time Clips, oh man, one time Clips said some shit to me and I remember it was one of those moments where like he said it and it was super funny and then it wasn't until like we wrapped that episode and I was like, fuck, this is what I should have said. So yeah. I'm going to say it now, God damn it. <laughs> do it, do it. So <laughs> um, I forgot what the what the setup was, but Clips was rapping at me and we were going back and forth, and he said something about my man bun, and I had some, I said something about how he looked like the the bear from Toy Story three, <laughs> and then and then he was like, he was like something something, and, and there was an Asian dude in the front, uh, in the front row, and Charlie Clips was like Chinese dude, translate this for me, and I was like yeah. ah shit, and then that dude got up and he laughed, but what I should have said was. After he said that the Chinese dude translate this shit for me, I should have said something, something. You think you a killer? Asian people are scared of you because they go Godzilla. <laughs> and I thought of that afterwards, and I was like, God damn it, that would have killed. <laughs> There's always those like could have, should have, would have uh, moments, dude. But that show was always uh, they they reinvented Wild and Out very well. Like, yeah, they definitely did a better job than when it was first out, and it was such a hit when it first came out. It was. Everybody was concerned about the the reiteration. Like, is it going to be good? And yeah. it was it was actually better than the first time it came out. I think Wild and Out came back at a perfect time because um, I think it came back when when hip hop was feeling really serious, mm. and Wild and Out was kind of like putting the fun back into it. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah. originally, where a lot of rappers that came on as guests were almost like afraid to let loose. And I always kind of tell people like when Rick Ross first came on, he didn't want to play any games. Like he told like he like the producers were like, "Hey, J 
just so you guys know, no fat jokes for Rick Ross, all right? And we were like, what? And then Nick ended up making a fat joke, but it's like, Nick, he can do whatever he wants, yeah. right? But it was kind of like, it, it, was, it made it a little tense, you know? And then after it was on for a few seasons and people kind of understood the nature of Wild and Out, Rick Ross came back and Nick was like, what's up? Well, you got any reservations about anything? And Rick Ross was like, no, whatever, do whatever, say whatever. Oh. And he, under- <laughs> oh. he was like, anything you know go ahead because now it was kind of understood it was like this is all just fun and game because it was too much pride and ego shit it's yeah. like you could you couldn't look weak at all because mm-hmm. then people would talk about it but the cool thing about that too is like i always wa- enjoyed watching rappers have fun mm-hmm. you know what i mean it also kind of humanized them too totally it's like they're okay getting roasted here and there and the cool thing is is like you know if they came out with something great it, it was so fun it was mm-hmm. just really fun to watch i think that's the one thing i really actually liked about nick cannon a lot is that he was able to laugh at himself yeah no matter how much of a big star he is how much money he's made how much success he has people will go in on this fool and he would always come back with his own shit and he was okay with it and because nick knows that let's say he gets roasted really bad on his show it's a win win for him yeah. you know what i'm saying if like, if he gets roasted really bad, the ratings are great, the show's still a hit. If he fucking roasts someone back, then he wins either way, you know? And it's like, that's what Nick's always been really good at. I think I did an interview, we were doing press for a while, and I was me, Nick, uh, maybe Matt Reif and King Batch, I forget, but we were doing promo for a while now. And, and I was just saying how, like, Nick is like the best person for the show to 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 present this show, and he was like, "Why? Because I'm corny." And I was like, "Nah, man, because you know how to take a joke. Yeah, because you understand. Like, this is like you putting yourself out there, letting these people make jokes about you. Everybody wins. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But you know, corniness is so relative too. Because when I hear people say like, "Oh, this person's corny," I think people are only corny when they try to be something that they're not. Mm. Right. So if Nick plays that role of you know he could take a joke. I don't think that's corny at all. Right. Like, it's like when people talk about, like, the idea of, like, geeks and nerds, right? Mm -hmm. I think you're a dweeb and a nerd if you're a dweeb and you try to be Mr. Cool Guy. Mm. If you're a dweeb and you enjoy being a dweeb, that's already cool. It just is what it is. Right, right, I hate watching people pretending, like, to be something that they're not because it makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know you, you know? It's like, who are you going to be? You're going to be this guy? You're going to be this guy today, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, when I see somebody like Nick, I just always see him having fun. And I think he he knows how to elevate that show too, where it's okay. He's mm-hmm. like, go ahead, take that shot at me, because we're gonna make this show better. So his bigger picture is always better than his personal wants, which I really like about him. Congrats to Nick on his eighth child. He's expecting, by the way. Oh, I thought it was like fifteen at this point. <laughs> my man, my man has the fruits of the looms. Yeah, all the fruits of all the looms. He is he is potent. He says that he's doing that on purpose. So I mean, congrats to him. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like, hey, if you got money, which he does, and you got. You got the means to raise these children, and fuck it, man, have all the offspring in the world. No, that he was—he has a silk scarf on. <laughs> looks like he's about to tell your future all the time. He—he's doing what I always joked about doing, which is, I always used to say I would love to have a child with every race of woman <laughs> to see how I would look <laughs> in in every different gene pool. You know what I'm saying? Every different color. Well, I mean, he—he he has the money to have as much kids as he wants. Mm-hmm. So. Ba- Ballin, dude. He sure does. And I, I, here's the other thing that I like about him too is that I think he just does stuff that he wants to do. Yeah. You know, there is no like, this is who I am. You put me in this box. Nick's like, I'm going to do Wilder now. Mm-hmm. Right. He goes, cool. Uh, I want to be a radio show host. I'm yeah. going to do movies. He did stand up, arguably some of the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but he's doing what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if it's bad or good. He's not even calling himself a great stand up. He wants to do stand-up, so he fucking did stand-up. Yeah. And what are you going to do? Tell him otherwise? He doesn't care. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't need to. He's just doing it because he wants to do it. Yeah. He has worked this hard to do what he wants, and he did stand-up. I saw two specials of his. I I literally almost broke my television. (laughs) I was like, this is probably one of the worst things I've ever seen. But when I looked at it, I was like, wait, hold on a second. He's just doing whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. And why the fuck not? Oh, fucking Nick Cannon, dude, amazing. And he put me on a song with Migos and Future, so shout out to Nick Cannon. Oh, <laughs> you know, I didn't even know Migos was three people for the longest time. Because you're racist. Or, <laughs> or they all rap exactly the same within the group, and they all look exactly alike. 
Wow, super racist. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. It's the sunglasses that are throwing you well, off. Well, because, you know, it's like the way they shoot music videos now. So I saw a music video. And it's all flashy and colors. <clears> and they're switching in and out. So I thought it was the same person just wearing different clothes. No, no, no. When I first heard um, Versace Versace, which was like, you know, arguably their breakout hit, I also thought it was, it was one guy um, until, you know, I really started hearing more songs. You know what I'm saying? Um, and... Uh, here's what's funny. I thought Usher was a group at first. For real? Yes, because his first hit, um, Before Anything Came Between the, oh, the, best. Um, the best. You Make Me Wanna, right? In that video, there's a part where it's a split screen and it's Usher like three or four times. But then there's also parts of the video where he's dancing with other dancers. So I was like, oh. is this a group? Is Usher a What is it? I thought it was like, Close-ups on one lead singer, and then it was like a group. You know what I'm saying? Isn't it crazy that even till this day at his age, he's older, right? Yeah. Still making bangers, ah, dude. Us just so consistent, dog. Us just so consistent, and like, uh, I'm, I'm probably like, as far as R&B goes... Usher's probably my, my number shit one. He's, <laughs> you know? he's, he's up there, dude. Like I think because he did a, a good mix. Chris Brown to me is the second iteration of Usher. Okay. Right. So he does a good mix of keeping current, but still having some of that that vibe and feel of like old school R and B. Okay. Okay. And it's that perfect good mix. Yeah. 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 And he was never afraid to evolve. Right. Right. Because right. a lot of like older like R and B musicians, they still want to st- stick to their old shit, and they never evolve their music, and that's why their stuff now sounds a little dated. Yeah. You know. But with Usher, still bangers. Dude. Yeah, bro. I'm so mad. I've never seen Usher live. He had like a little residency in Vegas, like four or five shows, and. I think those are done now, but I really wanted to go. He'll do another live show for sure. Oh, but I don't want to wait till Usher's fucking 60 years old. I want to see- uh, What's like 42 now? I guess. He still has time. 42 is very specific. Why did you say 42? Uh, because 42 is not old, but kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 40, 45. He's 45. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if you're right. How old? Hey, Siri, how old is Usher? All right, ignore me, bitch. <laughs> Why do you want to know? <laughs> Who is asking? <laughs> ah, 43. Oh, see, I was right there, 42, 45. You around were so there. close. Yeah, I lost my virginity to the Confessions album. Which song? It was probably, ah, uh, man. I mean, if I put the album on. Probably one of the best fucking albums ever. Uh, yeah, life. if I put the album on and it started with, uh, let's say, Confessions, the song. And we started having sex, then I probably lost it around Confessions song. <laughs> when I was done, it was about 30 <laughs> seconds into the track. It was, I, I lost it to the intro interlude. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, baby? What's, what are you at right now? What's happening? <laughs> I'll be there in 10 seconds. I'm, I'm at the studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, those early R&B sketches were the fucking best, dude. I know. So much fucking, like, talking. Yeah. You know, actually all, like, even rap songs and shit, everybody had, like, so much talking. Yeah. And I remember a lot of my early tracks, you know what I mean? You, I do that, so I'm like, yeah, ha <laughs> You know, I'm like fucking laughs and shit, like, oh, yeah, y'all ready for this type of shit? Oh, how did you how did you first develop your rapper laugh, dude? Because that was the shit that used to always make me giggle. I used to have the stand-up set back in the day where I would talk about that shit, because I'm always cracking up at the rapper trying to just, like, in his room going, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it, dog. <laughs> You're, you just do that shit. You're like, nah, run it back. That laugh was stupid. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> then you're like, all right, the beast coming on. You're like, ha ha. Yeah, here we go. Blah, blah, blah. Then, <laughs> but after a while, I stopped giving a fuck. And there's a couple tracks where I'm genuinely laughing uh-huh. because I would say bullshit going into it. And um, so I would just be like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. All right, fuck it. <laughs> and I'd just be like cracking up and then I'd rap, you know? But the rapper laugh is very fucking necessary. I'm not saying I don't like it. Yeah. I think it's dope. It's just from an outside perspective, when you watch somebody do it, it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> like if you've never been in a studio and you've seen somebody record, yeah. no music and you just hear their voice, it's pretty fucking funny, dude. <laughs> yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah. The best is uh, Jada Kiss, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jada Kiss. Shout out to Jada Kiss. Oh, one of the goats. Uh, yeah, man, doing ad libs is probably my favorite part of, of recording my verses. You know, because I get to like. <laughs> um, oh, when me and Rick were doing our uh, joke, our parody rappers, uh, Chunk Dirty. 
doing the ad-libs were my favorite part because they were so fun and so stupid. Um, and there's this, <laughs> there's this one line um, where we have a song called Fucking Famous. Um, so my character, I was, I was a guy named Lil Do Dirty and Rick was a guy named uh, Young Chunk. And um, we had a song called uh, I'm Fucking Famous where I got a line where I'm like, yeah, um, ah, something like people approach me like Justin Bieber, but when they approach you, it's like Ronnie Bieber, right? And then I'm like, <laughs> and then my ad-libs are like, um, Justin Bieber, he's famous. And it's like, Ronnie Bieber, who is that exactly? <laughs> like shit like that. <laughs> you, wanna, you don't want to, you want to the most hilarious thing? I bet you if you went back and you listened to that music, oh. it's considered a fire for uh, today's music. Hundo percento, dog. <laughs> right? Me and Rick had to try so hard to be whack, especially Rick, because, you know, Rick doesn't really, like, he doesn't rap, you know? Yeah. But he would write clever shit. So there was times when we were doing the Chung Dirty, um, like, little EP, I'd be like... That was too good, man. You gotta like ah, you gotta either like go off beat or say something stupider. You know what I'm saying? Cause you listen back now, dog. I got one of those fucking chunk dirty tracks where I listen. I'm like, this is hard. Like this is really good. I bet you if you took those same tracks and you just kind of updated the the production on it, how much you want to bet that shit'll go fucking. No, poor. the production's on point All too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, re-release it now. Remaster it. Remix and remaster it. Oh my god. Ah, oh, the good old days. And that's the thing too. It's like people always ask to bring Chunk Dirty back, and I'm like, ah. I'm like I'm trying to put out like real music if I ever finally get to it and yeah you know fans kind of they 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 fall they fell in love with the stuff that they love right so it's yeah. like they they want me to do the Kim Jong Il character who I love by mm-hmm. the way but I'm tired of it mm-hmm. you know so it's it's not because it's not funny it's not because I can't do funny shit with it I le- legit was going to open up during the pandemic <laughs> an ASMR channel of just Kim Jong Un damn <laughs> just, do it just <laughs> Eating shit and just talking shit about other countries. That's funny. Today we are gonna talk about in South Korea, <laughs> bunch of dirty Japanese loving piece of a shit. <laughs> you wake up every day and you have a sex with a hairy pussy. Who like a hairy pussy? <laughs> why, why did you do it? I don't know. That's I, funny, dog. I just I just was gonna do an ASMR channel, be dressed up as fucking Kim Jong Un, just talking shit. That's so funny. Good night, everybody. I hope you never wake up ever again, you piece of a shit Kaseki. <laughs> That's hilarious, dog. Oh, maybe I'll do it. Who knows? All right, well, David Soul's going to do it, and we're going to end this one because I have to pee. So thanks for listening to the dudes behind the foods. Make sure you like, comment, write us five stars on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen to this shit. Um, I'm Tim Chantaroxu. And I'm David So. Bye. <laughs>